from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, and welcome to a special presentation of theCUBE. I'm your host, Stu Miniman, and I'm happy to be welcomed by John Siegel, Vice President of Product Marketing in the Dell EMC CPSD Group. John, great to see you. Hey, great to see you again, Stu, as well. So, John, you've now matched me in how many EMC worlds you've been to. Uh, I, I missed my first one in 15 years. I said every, Is that right? every 15 years, I you think missed I out get on to a good take one. one off. So, yeah, first, g give us your impression. You've been, you know, back when it was EMC World, back when it was called something even uh, before that, uh, ETS and things like that. Um, Dell EMC World, for our audience, give us a little bit of, you know, what was different, what was exciting? Absolutely, well first of all, it didn't lose its, fe its original feel, which is really about for the technologist, yeah. right, at the end of the day, so we really still felt that, but at the same time, this is the first time Dell EMC came together, right, this is the first Dell EMC World in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and let's say that uh, in addition to all the technologist uh, sessions and such that were really focused on really dealing to the, the best practices and everything else around the technologies, we also had a lot of exciting keynotes as well, and, and I don't think uh, anyone's ever seen a, uh, a Captain Canada superhero flying through the sky uh, to land as we did uh, with Chad Sackage so uh, on day three. So again, it was an exciting show. I think that just uh, that that capped it off, yeah. um, but a real exciting show. Yeah, well, I mean, the history of Chad in keynotes, uh, you know, I remember when they gave out bobbleheads, uh, used to do videos of people flying out of planes and, you know, music videos yeah. and things like that. So uh, you, you, your group, which Chad runs, always keeps it interesting. <laughs> it does, and hey, it wasn't the same without you, though. Next year? <laughs> yeah, uh, right. I, I do plan to be there next year. Uh, right. Thank you, uh, and I, look, we had tons of videos there. Um, want to capture some of the things that, that we didn't get at the show. Of Absolutely. course, um, you know, th there's the, the new generation of servers coming out has a ripple effect uh, through the product line. But it you know, does. one of the highlights, and it's not just because I focus on it and you work on it, but um, that that maturation of kind of converged, hyper-converged infrastructure, uh, laying some of the foundational pieces for really modern infrastructure. Yes. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the the announcements that you had there. Uh, some of the key takeaways. Absolutely. So you know, first and foremost, as you said, uh, a lot of really Dell EMC World this year did focus on essentially essentially taking a, the mix of technologies that we have, for example, with software defined, HCI, next gen, we had the 14 generation uh, Power Edge announced as well. And actually, when, when you combine those and integrate those into a turnkey system and solution, uh, VX Rack, for example, that was real exciting news as well, right? So we had exciting news where you're basically taking um, hyper-converged at rack scale, which as we've talked about, right, this can become essentially the on-prem cloud of the future, right? And, and this is where we see it going now. We see, we see the future five to 10 years out where customers are going to have a hybrid cloud. They're going to have they're going to have workloads that are running on the public cloud. They're going to have workloads that they prefer to have on their on-prem as well. Uh, we see and we hear from customers, and we're seeing it in the numbers as well in terms of customer adoption. Customers are moving very, very quickly to HCI and software defined. Yeah, maybe you know some people look at they said you know I Dell and EMC they partnered together for many years, then they they had a breakup. And when you put it together, is it just you know Dell servers being skewed into everything there? Um, you know, give us a little bit of insight as to you know what that means. Uh, you know, what stays the same and what changes when, when you talk about uh, the, the CPSD portfolio? Yeah, quite the contrary. So, uh, the way we talk about it too is there's, all, there's really a continuum of what customers actually consider. Uh, they, they can do everything from build out, build out their own cloud themselves, or they can actually consume it, right? And the way they consume it is through turnkey systems. So what we do in the Converge Platform and Solutions Division is we don't just package things together. Uh, that, that's, a that's a simple task. Certainly we have that option for customers, but rather what we do is we create an integrated turnkey system and experience that really lays the foundation for the on-prem cloud, yeah. right? And ultimately the hybrid cloud as well. Uh, and, and that's what we do, right? So we take server, networking, storage, compute, virtualization technologies, uh, and we, 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 we basically, we design it as a system. We don't, we don't design each one separately. In fact, we have, what we have really are, are folks that look at the data center overall, uh, what's required from a scaling perspective, and making sure that we pre-validate the system and, and also take the, essentially the burden, if you will, of lifecycle management off of the customer's shoulders 
and we take it onto our shoulders to ensure that over time, not just the initial implementation of a, say, a turnkey system, but o overall, over the over five to ten years, we take all that lifecycle management headache off of the customer as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, uh, one of the things that excited me when we talk about kind of that that wave of HCI is customers used to have that uh, that that horrible thing which was called the upgrade cycle. <laughs> That's um, right. And it would be right. like, up, oh, wait, this year came up. Somebody in finance says, hey, you have you know X number of dollars allocated for this bucket, and they're like, but. Maybe I didn't even need that bucket this year. Maybe right. I needed another bucket. Um, it was, you know, how I bought it and what I bought was kind of dictated um, not by the business, not by, you know, the technologist, but it was just the way we bought things. And hyperconverged infrastructure and the whole software defined, you know, category yeah. is changing the way we buy things. Um, you know, I've t talked to some very large customers of, uh, of Dell EMC that say it's not about, you know, gr it's great that I can buy, a, you know, a very small uh, incremental piece uh, when, I, when I start building out like the uh, yeah. VX Rack Flex. That's right. Um, but it's, you know, how do I architect, you know, my on-premises cloud, uh, this is the, you know, applications I'm running, this is the data center, uh, you know, here's the governance and compliance that I need, and it's the, the, the platform that they build their IT infrastructure. Oh, and it happens to have you know servers, storage, networking, exactly. you know, the pieces that that, that need uh, to come out. So you know, t yeah, take us a little bit inside that. You know, what you're seeing, some of the some of the key things you wanted people to take away from the show. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I think again, as I said, <coughs> HCI is just so popular. In fact, if we look at all the sessions that we had around hyperconverged. Um, whether it was the hands-on labs or the technology breakouts, um, the HCI sessions specifically and the, and the cloud sessions were just standing room only. Uh, and I think the reason for that was, first and foremost, customers want to modernize now. Right? They're, they're, like, they're ready to move. Um, and I think we've seen, and we, in our, through our own surveys and through other surveys, anywhere from 60 to essentially 90% of customers now have some form of hyper-converged or converged in their environment. They will have it by the end of this year. I mean, that's how fast it's moving. So um, why is that? I think it's agility, uh, you mentioned that. The ability to start small and grow. I hear from time and time again, customers don't want to ever do another migration again. They are sick and tired of migrations. And that, that's probably the number one reason I hear for why customers want to move towards a hyper-converged model mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, using a more traditional uh, infrastructure model. And also I think, <coughs> and what actually I think really lends uh, uh, the credence to our Dell EMC coming together, is they love the idea of HCI and the ability to leverage the latest and greatest from, from Intel, for example. Uh, and so what's nice about hyper-converged infrastructure is it's, it's essentially it's a cluster. You can create pools of resources, et cetera. Um, and you can take advantage of you know, the, the Intel roadmap, for example, much more quickly by simply taking the new processing technologies, right, the latest and greatest, and adding that to the existing pools of resources you have, as opposed to need to start fresh and do a tech refresh into that. So, so it's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's a safe bet for customers that allows them to actually accelerate their transition ultimately to that on-prem cloud. Yeah, um, connect the dots for us though. Uh, you know, hyper-converged infrastructure, everybody's going there. Uh, they're also, you know, I, I think around the same percentage, you know, 80% are sorting out what their, you know, cloud strategy is. Um, is HCI, in, in your viewpoint, where, you know, we're pretty opinionated at Wikibon as to how we think it fits in, but I want to get your views on it first, is how HCI fits into the whole <coughs> cloud picture. I think it's a great question. So. Um, what we're seeing and what we're moving towards now is more and more essentially a standardizing around using HCI as the basis for the future of our hybrid cloud platforms. Um, for example, VxRail, VxRack, um, those are the becoming the, 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 the go-to, if you will, platforms. The reason for that um, is a lot of what I just mentioned already. It's the agility of the systems. It's the ability to, um, you know, again, start very start small and, and grow them easily. It's the ability to integrate into an existing ecosystem very easily as well with software defined. Um, so our, our customers, um, you know, whether it's simplicity, agility, and just, they also want to take advantage of the latest and greatest modern technology. So this has things like all flash, it has, has scale out capabilities, it has the ability to integrate into a existing cloud stack. Um, these are all the things that customers really want and know they need for the future. We're using that as the foundation for our hybrid cloud platforms. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, David Floyer uh, wrote, wrote a piece recently looking yes, actually at uh, uh, the VxRack Flex and said traditional storage, I, I believe the number is 47% uh, more expensive, just kind of taking white box storage. Yes. We always love <coughs> taking white box because people hear white box and they think it's going to be cheaper. That's right. And, and of course, when you put all the pieces together, um, okay, kind of understand the integration and, you know, and it's not even, we, we kind of think it's like, oh wait, it's just because 
is it going to be simpler and therefore I'm cutting headcount? But it, it really is the, 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 the total cost on things. Um, you know, it can be less expensive if we go to the more granular, uh, you know, pieces. Uh, we ha get greater utilization uh, of the equipment we had, which when I was buying, you know, kind of the monolithic storage, uh, I, I, I couldn't do that. Uh, definitely feedback we heard for years from customer. Um, it doesn't even count in there that migration costs. We say in the, if you take the lifetime of any storage array, it's, it's at least 30% of the storage cost, and it, gosh, if you can eliminate that, but not as the, the headaches to the storage people and everybody else, it's no, no, we'll get there. I, I know we have that box sitting there for two or three months. We're almost ready to use it. Right. <laughs> um, and the second one t t piece, time to value. It's, uh, I, I believe the number is about five times faster. Yes. Time to Six. value. Six times fine, uh, time to value uh, faster. Um, you know, you had a lot of customers talking at yeah. the event. Um, any kind of hero numbers that stood <coughs> out for you, or you know, case studies that you, you know, love when we can talk about, you know, some of the brand name customers that, that are using some of the solutions. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I may not use all the names, but certainly a lot of great stories. So VX Rack Flex, which I'll focus on here, uh, we've got you know now you know over a hundred deployments of that right now out in the marketplace, and it's a ra it's a very flexible architecture, by the way. So it focuses and it supports everything from traditional workloads to cloud native workloads. In fact, that's what a lot of our customers like about it. Um, and you know, it allows them to move towards that modern data center. Um, we've, we, you know, we got customer you know, stories galore. So one of the largest hotel chains, right, which I know you and I have uh, apps for um, on our phone, um, they recently went with a, a web-based reservation system. Um, they needed to actually have an enormous amount of, of IOPS. You would think traditional SAN. No, they actually went with a VX rack, Flex. Uh, what they were able to do is take all the different nodes, leveraging Scale.io is basically the, the back-end engine, if you will, for this, and basically take all the resources in the oomph, if you will, of, uh, and power of 30, 40 nodes and point them to one application to get millions of IOPS. Um, that's the flexibility that you can get from a VX Rack Flex. And then at the same time, we've got a, a service provider um, in uh, EMEA, for example, um, uh, NextGen. And what they're using uh, VX Rack Flex for essentially is there for their cloud. They're, they're running a smart, it's called a smart city initiative, uh, where they need to actually deploy new services, um, literally in hours, sometimes minutes, uh, for different government agencies, et cetera. Uh, what they like about this is the ability to actually literally very quickly spin up new applications, new services on the fly, um, without you know in, any problems, any disruption, any availability concerns at all. And what they're running on this is Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Yeah. So, so you got everything from, you know, and by the way, that, that, that other uh, IOPS application, OLTP, that was running on bare metal. You got bare metal, you, you can run bare metal on it, you can run, um, you know, any hypervisor, uh, for example, um, or you can run Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Yeah, I, I remember when, when we put out our research on server SAN, the second or third year into it, I wrote, one of the things that worried me a little bit is, I was seeing people just taking their, you know, virtualized SAN environment and just putting it in a different form factor. Same apps. Um, you know, slight improvement, but kind of step function. Um, you know, where was the application modernization and where is that driving it? So um, this <coughs> data center scale, uh, you know, type solution where I can use, you know, modern apps, uh, the cloud native, if you will, um, you know, is, is exciting to <coughs> see. Yeah, and the other one too is we have, um, we have an insurance agency as well and, and a financial institution is actually using 500 VX rack flex nodes. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the importance of showing this is the scale. Like you said, the data center scale. And, and they're using this for a number of reasons, but first and foremost, for the ease of scale. It's the ease of scale, and when I mean ease of scale, that means everything in the data center. It means not just the compute, not just the storage, but that networking is part of that design criteria as well, and as part of the system design. Um, so we were able to actually help them really accelerate the deployment of that. In addition to that, we actually now manage the life cycle of that as well. So all the firmware updates, the software updates on the networking side, for example, we take care of as well. So all that east-west traffic that you can imagine occurs, when you have cabinets and cabinets with hundreds and hundreds of nodes, we take care of that as well. Yeah, uh, you talked to, you said you've got <coughs> over 100 customers. Compared to the number of vBlock customers, or you know, take VMware vSAN, it, it's a small number, how come you guys are so excited about it? We're excited because it's, um, you know, uh, a lot of it's, 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 it's leveraging all the latest and greatest new technologies, right? So it's leveraging uh, software defined from Scale.io which is proven out there. So while we may only have 100 deployments of VX or, or more VX Rack Flex, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of deployments of Scale.io, for example, out there today. Uh, so it's very much proven. It's also leveraging the greatest from PowerEdge, so the, the new 14 genera 14G, 14 generation. Uh, it's going to leverage the scale and performance uh, improvements of that, right? And leveraging NVMe, which is, was actually, by the way, a big crowd pleaser as well at Dell EMC World. 
Um, so it's leveraging really the best of our software to find, the best of the server technologies out there, and it's really leveraging this trend of customers that have started to adopt HCI, and now they're ready to get go all in. We're, we're starting to hear customers, and so customers that want to go all in on software defined and HCI across their data center and run the vast majority of x86 workloads, they want to make sure that they have the whole data center in mind from a design perspective, and that's why VX Rack Flex um, in particular is becoming a really hot topic. Okay, I, I want you to put an exclamation point on this, John. Uh, I, I know when, when EMC bought Scale.io, uh, you know, Wikibon, many other analyst firms out there thought that, you know, intriguing technology, especially for kind of service providers. Um, one of the first customers I talked to was Itrica, uh, who loved it, but, you know, it took him months to kind of put the pieces together, yeah. you know, validate some of the, the pieces there, but loved the technology. As a service provider, he could build his business on it. Um, you know, you know, put the exclamation point on why, you know, VXRAC Flex, uh, you know, pulls it all together for you. Our goal and our vision is to see, you know, VX Rack, you know, can run any workload in the next three to five years, uh, literally any workload in the customer's data center. That's why we're really excited about it. It's the flexibility to run anything from a cloud native workload all the way up, you know, to a traditional workload. Customers want that flexibility. Um, VX Rack Flex provides that. Scale IO is the foundation provides that. It's proven out there. It's running in some of the largest um, financial institutions, transportation companies, manufacturing companies. This is proven technology that we're applying to just a different consumption model. That's all we're doing. And making sure we deliver it in a turnkey way. Um, and and I, I tell you what, I mean, customers are voting with, uh, with their wallet and they're really excited about it. And uh, if um, the attendance at Dell EMC World Sessions was any indication, uh, we got an exciting year to come. All right. Always one of the most exciting shows of the year. John really Siegel, is. thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you, And thank you for watching theCUBE. Be sure to check out siliconangle.tv for all the coverage, and thanks for watching.